All right, and welcome to episode three of Las Peliculas Sabados Gigantes, the podcast. I'm sure, hopefully, there'll come a point where I just fail to remember what the number is, but right now it's number three. Uh, uh, we'll go around clockwise, starting with me, and introduce yourself. I'm Ed. I'm Zeb. I'm Kenzie. And I'm Matt. All right, and uh, so what's the date today? It's the 4th of April, 4th oh, of yeah, April, 2015, right. Saturday. 4-15. And uh, tonight we watched Dick <laughs> Tracy... 1990s Dick Tracy, as selected by Summer, she won the lottery, and she failed to think about it in advance. She uh, had this plan in advance, but there was a few others she wanted to show, but she didn't let me know what they were, Darn it. so I didn't have time mm. to get them. And if you're listening to the podcast for the first time, how are the movies picked, Ed? Yeah, they're picked by, uh, we do a, like a lottery, and uh, basically the way it works is that, uh, there's a number of people that are eligible we have a bingo ball, and there's obviously 75 numbers in the bingo ball. So basically, whatever the number of eligible people is, whatever that evenly divides into, we use that. Like if it was, say it was like six people a night, so it was into 72. So basically, the most contrived possible way of of randomization. Right. Well, just it, yeah, or well, at least a, a complicated because I want to really enhance <laughs> the randomness. I want us to all believe that God actually has a hand in this. <laughs> And so by by making it completely, completely random. Uh, God must hate my picks. Yeah, well. Because I, I think, well, I'm not, no, wait, I'm not in last anymore. So you hear that, no, wait, Kenzie? You, you, we were the you chosen already, ones. You were the first pick on, on this round. So. Yep. I know. I was really surprised. And then Summer, too, because we were both last in the last round. And this time we both won the first week and the second week. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting, too. So you guys maybe, won in, like, reverse order. Yeah. So am I back in last place now? <laughs> you may be. I haven't looked at it lately. You may so. be, man. You, but I don't know what you've done to anger Jesus, but uh, apparently these ladies are doing something right. A lot of Facebook jokes. Yeah, yeah that must be it. That must yeah. be it. Um, that so, so we, I write the number ranges down on a slip of paper. Then those are randomly handed out. <clears throat> then we roll the bingo ball, and whatever number comes out, whoever's got that, the range that that number falls in wins that week, and they pick the film. So, Summer won tonight and picked 1990s Dick Tracy. I wish I had the tablet with me. Uh, it's 90, it, uh, 90, it was, there, like, it was 1990, actually. It was 1990, 1990 around okay. the time. It was. A, I remember because it was the year after Batman, Tim Burton's Batman yeah, that came was, out. Yeah, that was 89, right? Because yeah. it was kind of... A, and I, I'm pretty sure this is written and directed both by Warren Beatty. I know it was a passion project of his. Um, I know it was, it was something that he uh, wanted to get going for a while... Uh, a vehicle for himself because he um, he really liked the character and he had been wanting to play it for a long time. Yeah, produced and directed by Warren Beatty, written okay. by Jim Cash and Jack Epps Jr. Okay, not not actually written by Beatty. Uh, music but produced and directed by one Danny Elfman. Songs yeah. by Stephen Sondheim. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of you know a, a, one of the a, a saving grace of the film. I think that some of the songs are are cool, are good. Um, so yeah, so before we talk Dick Tracy though. Uh, there's a question I meant to ask last week that I forgot to ask. I, I failed to ask. I asked you, Zeb, because you, Zeb, won last week. We did a double oh. feature. But, Kenzie, you also won, and I didn't ask you. Uh, why did you pick Island of Lost Souls? What was it that made you decide that was the film to start our little series with? Um... I was just, well, my research process was just to look at Wikipedia 1930s movies, and somehow that was easier than picking one that was just taking place in the 1930s, so it ended up working out kind of like that, but, um, so I had a list of, like, four, and Topper and M were on that list, and... Topper mm. from 1937 with Cary Grant, and M, of course, Fritz Lang from 1931, I believe... And I actually own the Blu-ray, the Criterion Blu-ray of that one. So, uh, we, and I was proud to see that those were your selections. Uh, although I was disappointed that she also uh, had a fourth potential pick, which was the most dangerous game <laughs> oh, from yeah. 1932, oh. which <laughs> disappointed me tremendously because we had already watched it uh, when I picked it, <laughs> uh, and uh, clearly it made no impression, <laughs> which uh, is uh, tremendously disappointing. Yeah. 
Sorry about that. that. Was that one not an uh, uh, official pick? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I picked the general, which was shorter. Oh, um, I remember that. And, I remember the general. Yeah, that was and, the the second feature. Right? No, no, general we did first. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What I'm saying. Oh, okay. General gotcha. Came first, gotcha. And then, right. And then most dangerous because oh, most dangerous game. game is like an hour, yeah. and the general is like just over an hour. So we did the two, um, and uh, and yeah, there was that. So so why did you? So you had a good selection. What made you decide? And they were all available to you. So why did you decide I on the Lost Souls over say M or Topper? Because in the end, the idea of like a mad scientist doing experiments and like turning animals into humans or the other way around right. is more enticing than any of the other stories I read. So. Right. It really speaks more to our group. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know she likes uh, like weird sex movies too. So I, I think I think maybe the underlying sub bestial sub the, the bestiality right, right. subtext with, was definitely the, a factor. The Panther woman. The Panther woman. And, bestiality and, was on all of our minds, not of course. just mine. So. Of course. <laughs> uh, and the 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 animal men who were menacingly. You know, skulking about the background all the time, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 not, not not specifically saying they were there to sexually assault the women folk, but we know that was the case. Um, they definitely wanted to. Uh, and I think too, uh, I uh, I did make sure to let her know I wasn't trying to sway her pick at all because M is a brilliant film that I'm a huge fan of, obviously as I own it. But I thought she would be disappointed to find out that the movie doesn't really deal with the sexual proclivities of the child molester. But rather, <laughs> rather how society deals with him, uh, and I think it lost its appeal real fast <laughs> at that point. <laughs> I'm not into movies about child molestation. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I, I think uh, the fact that you know one uh, sounded like a really cool like sci-fi movie, and the other, you know, sounded a little heavier, and, it, and you're going subtitles versus not. Not that anybody has a problem with them, but just you know. Yeah, that actually, I didn't want to go with that one because of the subtitles, and it sounded more serious than the other one. And yeah, yeah. It, it definitely is. It definitely is. Uh, you know, and it, you know, it's wordier too. I think there's more action involved in that in Lost Souls. Right. All right. So, uh, so yeah, that's great. Um, so I guess uh, then, yeah, the next thing we should talk about then is good old Dick Tracy that we watched tonight. Uh, I if I'm if I I saw I saw this movie in theaters a few times. Because I was a kid, and I was, even though, you know, critically, I think the movie was panned pretty heavily at the time, um, and I think the studio dumped a lot of money into it, oh, yeah. um, and I think uh, I think expectations kind of weren't met back then, but there was a huge, like, advertising blitz. I remember, like, McDonald's had oh, this yeah. cool game yeah. with these scratchers. And it was... The best game in the world. Yeah, no, I was hooked on that game. I was like, dude, I got to keep going. It was the one where you had a scratch, and if you scratched the right one, you right. got a Big Mac or a <laughs> free fries. But what right. McDonald's did was to put like the winning scratcher or the winning space was uh, white lettering against a black background. All the ones that said, "Oh, you lost," was white lettering. I mean, black lettering against the white background so they like telegraph the answers kind of no all you had to do is just take your fingernail just swipe it you know gently across the very top of it right if you saw black scratch away if you didn't don't scratch it don't scratch it right. i was the luckiest oh, man guy at mcdonald's I'll when bet. that came out jesus man i feel like a fucking idiot now. <laughs> yeah i was like yeah <laughs> and, and they got suspicious of me they're like hey you're you, very lucky you cracked you know? the code. And i'm like hey. like the mcdonald's pit boss <laughs> like <laughs> comes over and like take you to the back <laughs> mayor mccheese is yeah. like who's this person yeah. arrest him that's one big mac <laughs> Putting you in the in the fucking jail out in the playland. <laughs> the, the Big Mac the, jail. The, the, yeah, the one with the cop. Well, I don't know what the cop was called. Big Mac. He was he was Big Mac? The cop was called Big Mac at McDonald's. Oh, okay. Yeah, All not right. not very clever. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I never remembered his name. I mean, I know he was a staple of the McDonald Land family and uh <laughs> and uh, the you know, metal thing a uh, metal replica of him you could crawl inside was ubiquitous. At playlands, at play places, <laughs> when I was a child. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it, it, that that was a fond memory. Yeah, of Dick oh Tracy yeah. At the time, everything else was not fond. No, you know, you know what's funny about it too is that, like, thinking back on it, because I haven't watched it in some time, um, but I'd seen it a million times. But thinking back on it, like, 
realizing just how wrapped up I was in like the hoopla of it. It was like the summer of like Dick Tracy. Well, the year before was the summer of Batman. Right, right. And so they're so, like, hey, winning formula. Let's try it with this yeah, movie. Yeah, and, and it worked on me kind of because I was buying the figures and, you know, watching the racist cartoon and, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, by listening to the soundtracks. And I think, I think, I swear to God, I think me and my brother and a friend even tried to do a couple of like radio dramas, like, <laughs> like Dick Tracy, like radio dramas with my little Casio SK1 sampler, <laughs> like making gunshots. I, <laughs> like, <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, I remember the stage production at Disneyland. Wow! Did, did did he dance? Yes, of course. Everybody danced. Absolutely. I'm, I'm then they shut it down when no a little surprise. movie called Beauty and the Beast came out. Oh! Then it became the Beauty and the Beast stage Holy show. Holy shit! And you know what? And I still you're have at, right. I still you're have at, a videotape. Beauty and the Beast was like ninety two. Yeah, and before that, it was just a Dick or, Tracy musical number. Yeah. And it was awful. It was terrible. Fuck, man. I, I it didn't was, even realize it. Dude, it was my... just god-awful. Very god-awful. Man. Uh, hey, and how is that stuff? Um, well, that's like a... Pretty good, actually. Is, is that, that's an IPA? Uh, no, what you it's a over there? Scottish ale. We're looking at uh, Ballast Point. Piper Downs. Piper Downs. Oh, Downs. That's why ale. it's called Piper Downs. It's a Scottish ale. What's the percent on that? Uh, not that heavy. It's like 5.8. Oh, okay. Here. All right. So Wait. you can... You can you can you can drink a little more. Five, well, five point eight. You're getting there. That's a cool label. Yeah, Ballast Point, one of our better local breweries. If you ever need something nice. to wash the taste of Dick Tracy from your <laughs> mouth, try Ballast Point. <laughs> Pipe her down. Yeah. Uh, okay, Pipe well, down. <laughs> so, uh, most great licorice stones. <laughs> okay, so the so, theme is the thirties. You know. So Sid, yeah, right. So since uh, I I know Zeb uh, apparently before we started. Uh, He's got a lot to say about this film. Oh, fuck this film. So let's go <laughs> Let's go around. <laughs> let's go around uh, counterclockwise this time. Okay. All right, we'll start with you, Matt, uh, and tell us, uh, you know, and, and, you know, be uh, be honest, you know, don't, uh, no, no, there's no pressure no, for I anybody. No, I'm, I'm not, I'm so, not going to be pulling punches. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's have it. What did you think about Dick Tracy? Uh, it, well, it was definitely kind of striking that nostalgic nerve, you know, because right. I, I was... I was a kid. I haven't seen this movie since I originally saw it in the theaters. So, I mean, wow, what what year are we in that's now? Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, like, it's, it's 25 years. Yeah, it's 25 this, this, years this, ago. This is, this is the 25th anniversary this summer. Yeah. So, I mean. I think like, it came out in what, June, there is, June, I think. There was a lot of things that, you know, obviously I didn't pick up, like being a, a little kid sure. watching this. Um, it was just way more comic booky than I remember it being. Right. Um, I remember the guys with the goofy faces, the makeup. The, and yeah, the villains. But I mean, it, it really struck me like um, how um, the the like the pan shots of of the city uh-huh. and the, and uh, everything was very sort of like um, like you're kind of going into this kind of like miniature world of yeah. of like this uh, you know this this comic book. Like you feel like universe. you're going into the panel on the page or something. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, that was kind of a cool style that I d- that I didn't remember from uh, from watching it originally. Um, so I mean that was cool. The um, uh, <laughs> I, I I do have to say Al Pacino was was pretty awesome. I, I'm trying I'm trying to hit all the good points. <laughs> yeah, right up front. <laughs> yeah, he is. I, th- I man, could that I be mean, his over most the over top. the top performance? So over the top, but I mean, you know, it's it's Al Pacino. I mean, it's, it's, he's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the the music, Danny Elfman. It was, I mean, it between the um, Danny Elfman's music and the the sort of uh, you know the the artwork with uh, with the the city and everything. Right. It uh, and a lot of it's at night. You know. Yeah. It was it was really kind like of like almost kind of like a pseudo noir, like or pseudo, it was a well, tone. kind of a pseudo Gotham. You know, yeah, it was like sure. it was really okay. Touché, I mean, the the, the, sure. the time frame, you know, they're they're one year apart. Absolutely. And uh, it was. Um, I'm sure that was very much intentional. Now that you bring I'm it up, sure, I'm sure I'm sure it that, was because yeah. you know the original Batman was such a huge success. That I think I saw. I think it they like were probably kind of uh, riding times. the coattails of of the style yeah, a little bit. For so, sure. um, so there was that. But um, uh, as far as the overall movie, I mean, it's it's not it's not bad. It's um it's not a great movie either. Right. Right. <laughs> um, I was enjoying it. 
for the most part there i mean some of the characters were just um gosh i i don't, I don't even know what uh, what the right word is but it's not, just not fleshed out enough um yeah that might be it one dimensional mhm well they are comic book characters so they're they're <laughs> supposed to be sort of you know you know parodies uh, yeah, kind sure. of um you know they're supposed to be over the top you know there's yeah. there's not a whole lot of there's not supposed to be a whole lot of depth to them um well well I don't know what else can I say well, other things will probably crop up so uh, what are you going to go what around. are you going to what are you going to rate it uh, I'm thinking right now um either a high 2 or a, a low, low 3, three. <laughs> fair enough I'll I'll probably have to uh sleep on that yeah, one. Yes, yeah you'll be about that one tomorrow <laughs> yeah uh, all right, uh, Kenzie, what did you think about Dick Tracy? Um, I actually have a lot to say about it, too, but I really liked it. <laughs> and I thought it was so pretty, and I loved all the colors. And I actually didn't even know it was, like, based on a comic book until after. So now that totally clears up, like, why they looked like that yes. and why it was so colorful. But, like, I don't know. I thought it was so nice. And then... Some of the pictures, like, where it would change scenes or something and there would be a landscape, I was just, like, wishing, like, where can I buy this? Because it looks like right. a painting, and I want to hang it up in my room <laughs> and look at it every single day because it's just that beautiful. So, yeah. And then it kind of reminded me of Annie, too, but with, like, a boy. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Sure. I was just wanting sure, them okay. to, like, that's, dance that's, that's together. That's, fair. that's a good point. When was, uh, when was Annie based? Uh, Annie was set in the 30s as well, yeah, uh, actually, right. uh, because it's it's a potential pick of mine. Yeah. Uh, and it was also on, uh, I think it was on Summer's Radar as well. Yeah. Well, similar thing at the end of the movie, the, uh, you know, the, the bridge. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 the fire of the finale kind of takes place. What are those, uh, what are those bridges called? Uh, uh, where, they the, go, where they go up. The bridges, the that, bridges go that go up. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? Drawbridges. Well, no, that's no, like the, the castle. Yeah, right? that's or like that's like, like where you. Yeah, that, the, but no, the kind that like break in the middle up, and do so, this so, so the, the boats the, can the go boats underneath. Can, yeah. Yeah. yeah, boat bridges. Boat bridges. <laughs> boat bridges. <laughs> yes, boat bridges. I uh, love boat bridges in the fabulous Baker boys. Um. Uh, no, I that, that's laugh a, so hard if they're just called boat bridges. That's uh, <laughs> that's actually a good that's actually a good point. I mean, and and uh, Dick Tracy is almost a musical. There's a lot of music in it, but I don't know that it, I would consider it a musical because there aren't musical numbers per se, yeah. other than the ones that Madonna basically performs because she's a performer. That's her role. That's her that's her character. Um, uh, so Annie's definitely more of a musical, but uh, I can kind of I can kind of see that. I mean, uh, in a in a yeah, there's some there's some similarities there for sure. Yeah. Um, but then you like the story, uh, you know, the little romance and yes, and oh, I was so pissed at him for kissing Madonna, but that's. I don't know how he held out for so damn long. I don't either, but I'm still mad about as it. As soon as, so. as soon as as soon as she crawled on the desk and was like presenting, like <laughs> my face totally would have been in her so. ass. Like <laughs> she would have been, she would have tried to talk to me and been like, "Where, where, whoa!" I, it would have been like there would have been like a puff of smoke, and I would have been. I don't know how I, I don't know how he fucking did it, man. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was just like really rooting for the three of them as a um, family to have a happy ending. They do make a cute like family unit. They did, you know. Yeah. And she's and she and she, uh, actually Good little Dickie Junior. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, little yeah. Dick Dick Junior. Dick <laughs> Dick too. Uh, and yeah, Glenn Headley who plays uh, Tess Trueheart is actually uh, very beautiful as well. Um, her beauty is far more understated compared to Madonna's in this film. Obviously, uh, she has no no nothing that shows her naked breasts <clears throat> like Madonna does. But <laughs> she's still. all sex appeal. Yeah, yeah, yeah still so. All right, so what do you think you're going to rate this? Um, probably a four plus. I wish I could give a half star, like four and a half. <laughs> but um, I might change that to five later, too. Wow. I really liked it. I thought it was so pretty. It just, <laughs> I don't know. I'm always, like, posting pictures of sunsets on Instagram. So, like, bright lights and pretty things are my thing. <laughs> it really, it really uh, hit a button for you. Yeah, so either a high four or a five, possibly. Wow. All right. Okay, well, Zeb, All feel right. free to <laughs> let's let's have it. Let's uh, feel free to drop a load. Okay, here. <laughs> I'll get out the Vaseline, yeah. make it easy. <laughs> I kind of have like a love hate relationship with this movie. Okay, and my biggest hate is Warren Beatty. 
<laughs> are you are you just not a fan of his or I is am, it just him I, in this film? I am not a fan of him in this film and him in general. Okay. So, Although I did love Reds. Okay. But like even like something like Bonnie and Clyde, like, he, like, he like I think, takes you I out think of it. Post Reds, I hate him. Okay. Uh because he begins I don't know what it is about him, but he's like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kinda like how uh pretentious. He's very pretentious as he got later later okay. on in his career with Bullworth and and all that stuff. And plus, I w- had the dishonor of having to schedule an interview with the man for a radio station I worked at. Was he an asshole? And he was an asshole. Oh. Like a big time asshole. I'm like, dude. That sucks. The, don't blame me because you couldn't make Dick Tracy too. <laughs> yeah. How, Interesting. Yeah. So you actually uh, spoke with the man. Yeah. And he was just like, this is how I want this interview to be. This is what it's going to be like. Blah, 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 blah. Really? That's and nice. I'm like, okay, well, is then there... Then now it's a commercial for you, dude. Yeah. Like, fuck that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right, we'll see what we could do. And we'll get back to you. I I, I pawned it off to somebody else. Oh, really okay. It was just very, very awful to deal with. But uh, the nostalgia factor in this movie was really good. Because I remembered yeah. the, the year of Dick... Tracy, <laughs> what was that? Was that the same year that this movie came out? Yeah, it was, uh, actually, that was in '96. Not in your Jason Land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, was... that was in '96 when Bullworth. He was promoting Bullworth. Yeah, I remember. And I'm like, uh, but which is weird. The first time I saw Bullworth, I was like, I love this movie. Then I watched it again on video after it been out of theaters. And all of a sudden, I was like, uh, this movie's actually kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> it was really well, weird. Well, that's, that's kind of how I felt about this movie, because there was this huge like build-up, this marketing thing. Oh, yeah. Buy the toys, go yeah. to McDonald's, scratch it's, this it's, off. It's the big event of the yeah. summer. Oh, and by the way, Madonna's in it. Yeah. Remember her movie, Truth or Dare? Because that's one scene with Warren Beatty. Yeah. Well, uh, she's in this one. And I was promised boobies. Right. I thought there was going to be like Madonna and skimpy outfits, and of course there were, but not skimpy enough. Because they're, it's yeah, a I mean, it's for, film. yeah, they're going for kids, kind yeah. of. And um, and just a stupid stage musical at Disneyland, and then MTV had a stupid promotion that said, <laughs> "Call this number, and you could win this car from the film Dick Tracy, and it will be delivered by Madonna." <laughs> she all drives it across. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, she, that was the whole commercial, and she was in the car, but it was like a lookalike of Madonna. <laughs> like, they filmed it from afar, and they just put, like, a wig on someone. Right, right. But, like, you're breathless Mahoney. Just she, yeah, don't do anything. Put just stare ahead. On. And that just kept playing on MTV, like, forever and ever. I don't know if anybody actually won it or not, uh, but it was I would just imagine. like Dick Tracy here, Dick Tracy there. And then I'm like, yeah, this is going to be an awesome film. Yeah, you know, you're Just pumped. like Batman. I was pumped. Opening day, I was there. <laughs> Here's my money. I want to see this movie because I liked the Dick Tracy comic book strips. Yeah. As a kid, yeah, that's what Chester I read. I, I, I watched the racist cartoons when they were on. <laughs> I had a Dick Tracy shirt, like original, you know. I, right, I had right. all this Drake, Dick Tracy stuff because it's, it's a really good comic strip with like all these different characters. Well, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know. It, it's it's one of the classic strips with with tons of like memorable characters and uh you know i don't know it's like it's like alongside like peanuts or you know mary worth or something it's just one of those newspaper staples and not only that but the cast yeah the cast was just great so based on the huge marketing campaign the cast my love for dick tracy i went to go see it just to be disappointed i walked out of that that movie just like fuck they should have gotten somebody else to play dick tracy warren Beatty was shit but the movie yeah, give me harrison ford made. someone said he was a poor man's harrison ford <laughs> and that's true give me harrison ford to play dick tracy this movie would have been elevated that might have been really cool yeah, yeah. I, could, I could see that being yeah, really good totally. actually harrison ford circa 1990 yeah. last crusade era Maybe if Warren Beatty's ego wasn't so big, he could have like the backed the project and then had Ford do it. So you think that the the movie fails for you largely because of Warren Beatty? I think then, it's or? mainly because of Warren Beatty. Yeah, I could uh, see that. I could see it being a real mistake for him to be, you know, directing and producing and, 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 and starring and, and starring yeah. in the same movie. It, it's a very big uh, kind of ego trip. I could see it. It's a it's it's a lot of different pairs of pants to wear. Yeah. A lot, yeah. a lot of different hats to wear on set. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's like, did you not learn from William Shatner in the <laughs> Star Trek franchise film? 
Uh, so what are you gonna rate? What are you gonna rate the uh, the Dick Tracy? I will rate it a high two, low three, and it's getting that high of a rating just for the nostalgic factor. <laughs> just for the just and for I'll the tell McDonald's you why. Contest. Because again, watch your feet. Here comes another name to be dropped. <laughs> Max Allen Collins wrote a wonderful novelization of this film. Right. And the novelization of the film was like 50 percent better than the movie. Really. Wow. And uh, he was surprised when I met him at Comic-Con and I had him sign it. <laughs> yeah, I can Because everyone's all like, wrote a perdition. Sam, I wrote a perdition. Oh, and he wrote I, that too. Yeah, well, he created it or like... Oh, okay. And I brought up this paperback of Dick Tracy novelization <laughs> and he was just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and he was telling me like, oh, Warren Beatty didn't like the novelization. Because it he, made his movie look bad. <laughs> yeah. Basically, he wanted more Warren Beatty, Dick Tracy stuff in the novelization, but it's a book though. How but the novelization was great. It was like a pulp, like a pulp novel from right. the nineteen thirties. Very descriptive of everything. Fleshed out the characters a little and bit more. And it had the kid too. And it he had was the cool. kid. Everything the kid. They made the kid a little bit more. You know, like edgy, edgy, kind of like loner Batman esque, like a young Bruce Wayne well, in a okay. way. And just the, how he describes the criminals, Big Boy, Big Boy's relationship with Lips Manless, why Big Boy, you know, oh, has okay. a hunchback. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like, kind of like how, like, The Godfather, like, I think, as, as far as I know, in the book, you find out sort of more about the connections between the Dons. Oh, and, definitely, definitely. And, all that and stuff. that's how the book was. And and if, if if anyone's listening to this podcast, read the book first. If you can find it, go on eBay. Now this is the this is the novelization of the film, right? That is correct. Because this is the first time I've ever heard of this. Now I've heard of the book the film was based on being superior, but I've never heard somebody say no. They made the, the novelization first, of the, the novelization. film is better. So it it's, is. it's the novel based on the movie, based on the book, based yeah. on the strips. Yeah, yeah, based, based on the strips. Basically, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, do you think? Uh, I mean, uh, you think you could find it on eBay or Amazon pretty cheap? I, I think you can find it pretty cheap on there. And this was during the time in the ni- early '90s where, like, every movie had a novelization. Halloween Six had a novelization. Yeah, well, I, yeah. Thanks <laughs> to kids like me who would read that crap. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, just just try to find a novelization, and just like the whole that whole year, the year of Dick Tracy. Right. That's why I'm I'm rating it a little bit higher because it was a good year. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, I, I almost wish we had a list of films to come out in 1990. Because as I recall, that was a really fucking solid year. I think Gremlins 2, The New Batch, was in 1990, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Um, Goodfellas. Yeah, Goodfellas Al Pacino was actually nominated for a supporting actor for his role in this film. Uh, well, well, I mean, if you, if, you, if you take it for what it is, I mean, that it's a pretty scene-chewing role. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I he kinda... carried this film as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, he's a. Yeah. But he lost to Joe Pesci. Way, way more presence than Warren Beatty. Yeah. I think that anybody. I think that the nod was probably they're like that's as far as you're gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> like with this, you know what I mean? Like we can't. I mean, come on. What do you think we're gonna shower this thing with Oscars? Like, give me a break. Did you see it? Right. <laughs> um. So all right. Well, so for me, uh, it is kind of a mixed bag because there is the whole nostalgia thing and as we were talking about i was i was wrapped right up in it i mean i you know the stupid cups at mcdonald's the fucking scratcher <laughs> game you know what i mean just like all the the fucking panini sticker books and shit where you would get the you know they had those where you would buy the you get the book and it had a bunch of like blank frames with numbers and you bought packs of stickers that had numbers that corresponded. So you would slowly fill up this like photo album basically with stickers of, of it. You know what I mean? And there'd be somewhere, you know, it would take one sticker and you'd get a whole picture. Others you had to put four together or like nine together to build like a big one. Uh, you know, I was into all that crap. Like I said, stupid doing our own radio dramas for fuck's sake. Um, but it, it's, it's just kind of funny. It just goes to show like the power of marketing because the film itself is actually not that good. Um, now I, I'm a fan of it from like it, it's almost it's almost like uh, it's almost like Flash Gordon from 1980, where critically everyone was like this thing's a piece of shit. Like come on, and if you really want to you know critically scrutinize, yeah, but look at the production design. Flash Gordon is a beautiful film. The, I mean the color palettes, the 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 sets, the costumes. Um, the the matte paintings, 
everything is gorgeous, and the film is so is so stylish that for me, you know, those things that are supposed to make up like a good film take a back seat to to this sort of just this sort of breathtaking like style of the film. And I think Dick Tracy kind of occupies a similar place. I think Flash Gordon is better, but I think that for me where Dick Tracy succeeds is in the richness of the production design. Like, Kenzie, like you were talking about with the just the sets and the matte paintings. That one shot where you go from, from like, outside the diner and the camera you pans kind of pan up, up and it and looks then... like you're going into a matte painting, but then you go you to do, the it actual... It keeps going. You go yeah, and, and you get, like, this, this... You get close a close-up of the outside of the of, of Lips Manless's Club, and it's a really neat effect, and it's a really beautiful, you know, transition, and, and, they, and they really do a great job of creating this world that, you know, that they live in. You know what I mean? And everybody's... The costumes are these bold colors and these really expensive-looking fabrics, and everything looks, like, really authentic, except for the, the like, hyper-colorization of it. Because, I mean, you know, really, in 1930 or 1931, whenever this is supposed to be set, there was... Cars were black. Well, <laughs> Unless yeah. it was a cop car, <laughs> and it had a white door. You know what I mean? Yeah, like like Ford would say, like, you could have any... Uh, you could have a car in any color you want, as long as it's black. As long as it's black, exactly, exactly. I mean, but that's like the, what it was. You know, but... the, the vehicles, uh, while they look uh, authentic uh, to the time, uh, in terms of their design... You know, they're just, it's looked like somebody dumped a bag of Skittles out on set. You know what I mean? I love that. Right? Yeah. That's but, my favorite part. You no, know, it, it's absolutely, it's very beautiful. Uh, and I also But like, it's that kind of stylization where it's like when you're when you're making something that is, is not, uh, when you're looking back, you're, you're basing the story in a time period that's that's way previous right. to when you're making it. It's sort of like, I, I, I kind of remember like, um, uh, like, like in Back to the Future 3, like, you know, when he's, uh, when he's about to go back to the old west, and right. like the 1950s, Doc Brown is dressing him up like in this ridiculous outfit. You know, it's like these right. all bright colors. <laughs> yeah, totally, like, totally anachronistic. It's like what they thought like cowboys uh, yeah, that's, should that's wear. What, that's what I kind of think of. It's like yeah. it's like it's not obviously what they wore back then, but it's like it's like what a more recent uh kind of time in in, in history thought of when right they, when, they, right. when they were thinking of the 30s and and that's actually a, a good point you make because that's that's why when we talked about this theme we we wanted it to be open to films that were set in the 1930s yeah so you can get different perspectives right right you know what i mean to see like what films of the 30s were really like and then to see what other generations thought that they were like you know what i mean and it's mm-hmm. really funny kind of like watching um <clears throat> especially um uh, well, both films last week because they were they were set. I think they were set pretty much around when they were filmed. Mm-hmm. I don't think that even with Lyle and Lost Souls, I don't think that the I don't think that its temporal location was too far from when it was shot. Really, you know, you see, you see what the styles were like. You know, Make Way for Tomorrow. You know, you saw the suits that the that the guys were wearing. You saw the dresses that the women were wearing, and then to see kind of in nineteen ninety the next week sort of what they thought you know or what they they th- they the, or the way they wanted to like represent what that what you know what i mean you can you can see the difference yeah but it, it was very you know to to an extreme degree yeah. it's like you know, oh yeah. obviously no one thought at any point in time yeah that that's what it looked like but as you know it's it's all it's 30s as well as a comic book so it's right. kind of you're writing that that line of of you know of what was historically accurate as well as this sort of, you know, hyper-colorized... The stylized version of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, also, too, uh, you know, it's funny watching it again. I felt there was really a lull in the middle. There's two songs, like, back-to-back. There's, like... It's, like, she does, like, sooner or later, and there's a montage, and then um, they do the 88 Keys song... Uh, Shit, the one Mandy Patinkin was singing, uh, and, and, th- and those are those are really close together in the film. And, and I, for the first time ever watching, I was like, I felt it just really fucking slows down in the middle. Is that um, the part where it's kind of doing the montage where he's really like cleaning up, cleaning up the streets when they have the bug? Uh, like, no, that's, that's back in business. That that oh, was the oh, up tempo right. number that I yes. really like. That's for me. That's the best song in the film. That is a good song. And and I bought all three fucking soundtracks, <laughs> and none of them had it. I can't tell you how frustrating that was as a kid, like hearing that that song in the fucking movie and wanting it, 
and buying three separate albums. And, none of them have, and the biggest fuck off of all is on the Madonna soundtrack album, I'm Breathless, songs from and inspired by the movie Dick Tracy, there's a song called Back in Business that sounds nothing fucking <laughs> like the Back in Business song that's in the movie because her Back in Business song is not in the movie. And I thought that was particularly uh, fucking frustrating. Sounds like some I, sort of a rights dispute. I thing. thought it was a real bait and switch. Like they knew motherfuckers were going to be looking oh, for the sure. one that Janice Siegel <laughs> sings and they're they're like, well, guess what? We're not giving you that one. And why don't you put that on the soundtrack? <laughs> you mean you obviously fucking recorded that for the movie? Like, wow, well, I don't get that. I don't understand soundtrack rights. But that was that was frustrating. Um, but so really, I think like for me, like I'm I'm torn because it's the style over substance thing, mm-hmm. you know. And I actually will agree with you. Like Warren Beatty for me is is by far not the strongest thing in this film. There are some strong things. Pacino definitely being one of them. Dustin uh, Hoffman. Yeah. Oh, Dustin Hoffman's cameo oh. is great. <laughs> Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, his role as Mumbles Classic. is awesome. Uh, really, uh, it, it's it's worth seeing for Pacino's performance alone. He's so over the top. Uh, it's like you, even like stuff like Son of a Woman where he's known for being over the top. It ain't like this where he's just, I swear, I thought he was going to have a stroke. He was yelling, <laughs> just yelling so much. You know what I mean? Um and so, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'll probably give it a three, not a super high three, but uh, I'm also, you know, it sucks that everybody fucked off before this thing too, because I'd be really keen to think, hear what everybody else said. Because I think, I think that Snig and and Land dug it. I think they were way into it too, um, which is like cool if they mm-hmm. were. You know what I mean? Cause it's better if everybody likes stuff. Even I mean, I know like this movie's got its problems, but. <laughs> Um, well, maybe we could find out next week. Yeah, uh, if uh, more people stick around, maybe yeah. we can. Uh, we can ask. Here. So, oh, wow. you, not next week? <laughs> no, I'll but. be at the National Association of Broadcasters Convention in beautiful downtown Las Vegas. All right, oh, representing cool. KKSM. Yeah, I'll be hitting up the Pinball Hall of Fame. You, oh, you hell will yeah. not yeah. be disappointed, <laughs> man. I am telling you, <laughs> you orbital. Should, you should. Yeah, <laughs> the oh best yeah, one there. yeah, yeah. There's yeah, there's weird magnets in it. It's fucking crazy. There's like they've got like all the Star Trek ones. They've got Got the old Star Trek arcade ca- cabinet that you actually sit inside. Really? Yeah, because John, because jo- John was just out there a couple weeks ago, and he was like, because they they had it forever, but it wasn't working. But now it's working. Um, the last time I was there, <laughs> they had an actual functioning cabinet of a fucking Roadrunner, which I like. I never see anywhere, uh, and that game is. It's fun as fuck, even though it's super difficult. <laughs> uh, and like Black Knight and Black Knight Two and Space Shuttle and Star Trek Pinball Man. I'm I think that's you, where I'm going to be spending most of my you're time. You're going to flip out. I think I'm just going to collect the award and then I'm just going to go straight. Be, yeah, yeah, party there. <laughs> Do you sort of favor too? Buddy up with the guy that runs it because he's like always there fixing the machines, like okay. fixing different machines, and he's he's got like a million Is that stories. Like the, uh, the, cool. the old dude with the beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's like always in the back, and it's great too because there's there's a couple of really cool vending machines. Teams. And they even have pinball games that go back to like the 40s and 50s and shit. Ding, ding, ding. Really old ones. The um, old mechanical ones. Yeah. It's yeah. it's really, if you're. That's a fun place, man. It, it is really. It is killed for, many hours for my For my dollar, it's the best like arcade Was you there can a go Dick to. Tracy pinball? Uh, there uh, might. There, I'm sure there, there was. was. There was one for the yes. fucking Shadow and the Adams Family. Yeah. I remember playing yeah, those. Have, yeah. I, do, I do remember a Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy. I remember a Dick Tracy Nintendo game too. Uh, yeah, I have it. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. The Wayne's World it, game. Uh, I think it's worse. Oh, actually, man. it's funny. There's an angry video game nerd. Uh, he he does a review of Dick Tracy that really really helps to illustrate uh, how awful the game is. Not quite that. as bad as. I want to see that. Yeah, ET. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> a- actually. It, did you did you end up watching the Angry Video Game Nerd movie with us? Uh, n- uh, no, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, because Although I was wondering, you know, just as an aside, like how mm-hmm. it stacks up against Al's, Al's party, party kit. Because uh, <laughs> this has been sitting here. When are you gonna, you know, <laughs> are you are you ever gonna take this out of its mint and box <laughs> package? As soon as I set the C sixty four back up, dog, that's gonna do be it. the first do program it, I boot up. <laughs> we gotta do a review of this of Al's party kit. You yeah. know, there's an Alf poster inside. Really? It's Dude, the same why one. is that not hanging up in your in your apartment um, right now? Because that's still mint in box. Well, I'm afraid to open it because it's mint in box. You never. Well, know. the the, the sticker price is fifty cents. Do you do you think it's gone up that, much since then? Yes. Okay. Let me well, search eBay. To yeah, see Al's, yeah. Party Al's, Google, Al's party kit. Al's party kit. Google goggles. Alf's party kit. 
Um, <clears throat> but at the end of the Angry Video Game Nerd, he does his, he finally does his review of E.T. the game. Oh, and no. he actually... See, the problem with games like that is that, like, the instruction... Nobody read the instruction manuals, and these games were, like, really hard. But, the, but if you know what you're doing, E.T. actually doesn't suck that bad. In fact, it's a lot like the Raiders of the Lost Ark Atari game, which, <laughs> which received a lot of praise. The, it's, the problem is the pits... And people couldn't figure out what the fuck to do, and ET keeps falling into pits, and that's Indiana endlessly Jones frustrating. And the two tall walls. And the two tall walls. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great game. Um, you got fifteen dollars worth of material there. Ed. All right, fifteen. Bucks. 15 it's worth it just for the poster, man. Um, so I, I guess let me uh, let me tell you. Uh, I'm going to buy it now. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> so you have one that's unopened. <laughs> Uh, yeah, do it. Christmas make present. sure make sure it comes with the poster because we'll hang that up in here. <laughs> uh, so let me tell you my story uh, real quick about how I know Robert O'Cop was destined oh, yeah. to be made. So, okay, no, so, so Robert O'Cop. Okay, yeah. first of all, first of all, because there might be some listeners who don't maybe, know. Maybe, maybe, hopefully, hopefully, at some point, you know. <laughs> People going way back in the archives right. once this finally gets you know some traction. Right, right. All right, you gotta you gotta tell us. You gotta give us the pitch. So of Robert O'Cop. So uh, the movie. So yeah, basically uh, our little production company or me and these other guys, uh, Cody and Jeff and Jeff Davis and Jeff Escobar. Oh, uh, the Jeffs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, we call ourselves Toothless Richard Productions, and we make we make <laughs> <laughs> we make little films together. And uh, we've got a new one that we're, we haven't shot yet, but we're sort of in pre-production on right now. We plan to shoot after the semester ends, and it's called Robert O'Cop. And it's basically like a, like a stupid little like sh- art short with a joke, but that many people might not get. Only the right people will get. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, just, it's, kind of, yeah, it's just kind of a bizarre little art film where basically... It's basically like Terrence Malick's Days of Heaven, only with no child and no woman. But it, there's a dog. And this dude lives, you know, this serene, idyllic life out in some field. You know, like in some, I don't know, Midwestern or Pennsylvanian wonderland. Uh, and uh, maybe, maybe not quite Amish, but... Yeah, but sort of, you know, think, uh, th- you know, he's a, self, a self-sufficient guy. You know, he's not Working like land. he's not like, yeah, he's not like at Costco. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> he's sort of disconnected from society a bit. And uh, anyways, one night he ha- he goes to bed and he has this really bizarre nightmare wherein scenes from RoboCop one, two, three <laughs> and the RoboCop TV series play, <laughs> play out. Uh, where there's the first episode stars a uh, co-stars Martin Milner, by the way. <laughs> so definitely worth checking out because I'm sure everybody remembers him. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and then he, he has this crazy weird dream that's really disturbing. Where he sees like Clarence Boddicker, you know, can you fly, Bobby, and like all this stuff, and like behave yourselves, and like officer down, and all this kind of stuff, and like there is a bomb in the cake, and uh, and he wa- he wakes up and he's horribly frazzled and doesn't know what to think, and finally he manages to calm himself down and go back to sleep, and then we see through a series of dissolves him live out the rest of his life until the end, uh, unmolested by further uh, delusions of RoboCop, but. At the end, we see his gravestone with the dog sitting next to it because somehow the dog outlives him, which is going to be funny as well. Uh, and uh, we pan up, and the <clears throat> the gravestone says Robert O'Cop. And I'm debating on whether to make it the fourth, the fourth or not <laughs> because I thought I thought like it, it's a family curse passed down. Generations. Yeah, right. Or I, I yeah, or but I thought if we leave the fourth out, it kind of makes it like. You sort of know you you only know that he's connected to Ro- RoboCop, but you don't kind of know when or how. Whereas if we say the fourth, like you know, kind of. Well, I guess you don't really know because well, he's not RoboCop at all. I don't. He's Robert. You, he's yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. That's so. <laughs> so anyway, so it's Robbed just this, his friends. Yeah. Right, of course. So it's just yeah, just this bizarre little arm. And and the idea is that we really wanted to ape Terrence Malick, uh, Days of Heaven, because Cody is uh, our our camera guy our director of photography uh and he's he's got a really keen eye i mean he can shoot he knows how to shoot stuff and he's got he's shoots he shot some really beautiful footage in the past 
And I know like he really is into kind of like aping styles sometimes and trying to do new stuff that he hasn't done before. So I, I thought like I knew there'd be a way to like get him on board right away is to sort of pitch it like we're doing Days of Heaven. So anyways, we had a pre-production meeting and we were talking about what we got to do before we start shooting. And one of the things was I was like, OK, so we I want I, we asked our actor, I gave him a script and I was like, if as soon as he's on board or if he's not, as soon as we have whoever we're going to get on board. I want to have a group screening of Days of Heaven because I want us to all be on the same page on the aesthetic we're going for and, and you know, what, what we're sort of lampooning here or paying homage to or whatever. Um, and I was thinking about how we're going to get it done because Criterion just put out a new Blu-ray, <clears throat> but I'm, you know, obviously uh, quite the popper, so I don't have tons of dough. Um, and Days of Heaven, uh, while its quality film, was not the next Criterion I wanted to buy. Nor was it really on the short list. It was kind of down a bit. But I'm like, how are we going get to get a hold of this? Because John doesn't do the Blu-ray, and you got to have the Blu-ray to make it. Anyways, long story short, I'm working at FYE. I'm putting away, they because they buy used DVDs, and I'm putting away the stack of used, and uh, I'm like, going to the stack, whatever. I get down to the bottom of my stack, and in my fucking hand is a used copy of Terrence Malick's Days of Heaven on Criterion Blu-ray. For nineteen ninety nine, and I get like thirty percent off. So I'm doing the math really fast uh, against my better judgment, <laughs> and I realize that that's fourteen bucks. And I don't usually buy used, but I took a gamble on it because I'm like anybody that would own a Criterion would take care of it. So sure enough, I bought it, get it home, open it up. Fortunately, the fucking sticker they put on it came right off without damaging the case at all. Pop the disc out. Not even a piece of dust on it anywhere. Not a fingerprint, not a scratch, no nothing. Brand fucking new. So that's how I knew Robert O'Cop was destined because <laughs> the Blu-ray of Days of Heaven fell into my lap. It came to me. I didn't have to do shit. It was a message from guard, I swear. Ed, you <laughs> are the chosen one. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Robo Take uh, this <laughs> gift from me. Robert O'Cop. It's a sign from guard that it must be made. That's how I took that. Praise Allah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, praise Zombie Jesus. And, uh, and oh, hey, hey, is it midnight yet? No, we still got oh. a ways to go. Oh shit. Ten, ten. All right. Um, and also, all right, that, Zombie Jesus is not yet risen. That uh, that oh yeah, because we're on the eve of Easter. Yeah. We're on all yeah. Easter's Ooh. Eve. It's zombie um, Jesus somewhere in the. But uh, anybody, we're going to try to schedule this screening of Days of Heaven at P32 at the, on the Palomar campus. Hopefully it'll be with the new projector yeah. we got with the grant money. Uh, yeah, ideally. So, uh, But it'll be open to everybody that wants to come watch it. I know you definitely want to come see it. No, but if you, wanted to, <laughs> if you wanted to come out and, and uh, well, the room is big, you could come out and watch it too. Uh, and anybody listening, if you're in the area... <laughs> 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 I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll give an update of when that is. Uh, if you want to come watch Days of Heaven with Toothless Richard, you uh, <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome is to it do toothless, that. Ri toothless Richard. Yes. Or toothless Richards. Toothless Richard. Okay. Because it's a. It was this guy when we shot Metamorphosis. Because our first film that we did together was called Metamorphosis, and we we shot it at this old uh, meth house in Ramona. That was somebody had like been killed in or something, <laughs> and they were they were like hazmatting it out. <clears throat> it was like between owners, and they were like in their like crime scene cleaning it up and whatever. So, uh, this Andrew Tarr was this guy. He's going to be on my show, my radio show Thursday morning. Actually, I got to text him and remind him. His dad's a real estate guy, so he got us this location. We had it for two days. And anyways, they hired this like tweaker couple because Ramona's really weird, right? And this thing's on a good piece of land, but over here there's like this tweaker couple living in like an RV on like you know, you know, posts. You know the the wheels are gone. <laughs> Their house no longer has wheels. Their house has stumps now. And they're like they're being paid to like clean the place up. And the guys totally missing teeth. Both of them just and and like. You know, they left us alone for the most part, but every so often they'd come over and they'd be like, ah, oh, I'm making a movie, huh? Like, and they were really fascinated by the fact that we were making a movie. Was uh, his name Richard? Yeah, and every other <laughs> joke was about how we're making a porno. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's what, we, yes, we're here to make a fucking porno on this. 
There was this mattress in the house that was. It, you remember Hellraiser? Uh huh. Remember the Hellraiser mattress, dude? I swear to God, like that's all I could think of. I'm like, I don't know what has happened on this mattress, but I'm not even gonna. I don't even want to have the same room with it. Just yeah, hit it, hit it with the black light. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Uh, I don't want to. I think uh, ignorance is bliss in this case. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no shit. I'm fucking thinking. So no homeless guy came over and started eating grass. No, and... no, he just came over and started asking if we were making a porno. <laughs> <laughs> now he wasn't really homeless, but uh, but yeah, I I was afraid if somebody were to like bleed on the mattress, then Uncle Frank was going to come back. <laughs> so it was really creepy and gross. So I'm glad we're never going to shoot anything there again. But that's why we call it Toothless Richard Productions because we all were like kept laughing about Toothless Richard. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, Hopefully he's long since dead by the time we actually get enough success to like make some money so he can't come after us. Do you think he would actually be able to put two and two together? Yeah. Be like, hey, wait a minute. Uh, My name's Richard. Wait a minute. I'm toothless. I don't know. He could tell we were filming a movie. He's probably <laughs> he's pretty sharp. like adult bookstores and trying to find that videos. Yeah. Going on Pornhub. He's Ramona. Like, House, yeah, yeah, right. Porn. Yeah, he's like looking. No, I know they were shooting the porno. Where is it? Like trying to find it. <laughs> like God, college dude. students. If you, porno if you mattress have... Ramona. <laughs> it's got to be on here somewhere. I just know it. Uh, and if uh, you had been on set, I mean, I I can only imagine how off-putting and disgusting a porno would have been <laughs> had we actually made one between all of us. So. Uh, but yeah, so that's the story of that. Um, well, I guess uh, yeah. Uh, is anything else? Should we wrap it up then? I guess because we uh, we extinguished our Dick Tracy talk here. Uh, uh, yeah, I, we, I think we, we've we talked still... it all out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, Dick Tracy, not uh, not super well received right now for me, sitting at the bottom of the list. Well, the people that matter are here. Yeah. That... <laughs> True. Just throw that out. That's what I said. I mean, maybe Chris won't be such a candy ass next week. He'll be sleep in all this week. I know he's got a. I know he's got a rough work schedule. <laughs> that pain in the ass. <laughs> maybe he can sleep in this week so he can be here to, to talk shit next week. Um, yeah. All right. Well. So yeah. I guess that'll wrap it up then for this edition of Las Películas Sabados Gigantes. Uh, we'll be back with another edition next week. Uh, I don't know. Condi will probably be back with us because he doesn't have Wonder Con, and I know he had a good time doing this last time, so I'm sure Wonder he'll, Condi. He'll, yeah, yeah, Wonder Condi. Yeah, I don't so. know why I find that hilarious, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like the thing he's doing at uh, Invista that we're doing a remote from. Like we keep calling it Condi Con because he's the one <laughs> putting <laughs> it to putting it together. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're gonna pick, but we're uh, we're down to uh, an even smaller group yet of potential. Uh, Potential well, with, people. Uh, with summer out and then Condi actually attending, the uh, odds are not going to be changing. Yeah, I, 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 if, if everyone is. Yeah, but is it, well, no, but he's, he's out anyways because oh, yeah, he won that. last week. Uh, but I'm I, I have I, and I have no idea what Condi is going to pick. Chris, I know the selection of picks he's like trying to choose from, mm-hmm. and I, what it doesn't. I, I whatever he picks is going to be. I think is going to be really cool. Um, I, I just can't. wait till you get to my. Pants. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any idea what you're doing either. But I'm I'm really excited to see this stuff because so far everybody has been. I think it's going to be impressive. a real, real awesome uh, double feature. Good. Oh, okay. Ooh. That means a couple it, it, of shorter it, ones. Yeah, one is. Uh, let's see, what, the first one is about sixty minutes. The second one is seventy minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. And uh, yeah, not to give too much away, but one of them is. Um, it's going to be a little bit of an experiment. I don't know how well received it's going to be. Okay. But if if it's poor, so be it. I got one. Hey. It's the palette. So. I mean, and that's. I mean, this is an experiment. Yep. You know, this is like a satellite of love that like lands and that we can <laughs> we can go home from. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm super jazzed to see what everybody else is going to pick. So I'm sure it'll be uh, whatever it is. We will have a fascinating and rousing discussion about it following. Uh, so let's go around clockwise. Everybody introduce yourself again. My name is Ed. I'm Zeb. Kenzie. And I'm Matt. And uh, we uh, will be back in some configuration next week with more stories. All right, thanks. We'll see you then. <laughs>